Hi folks, welcome. Welcome to the studio for the third demo. This is the third demo of today, all live. It's been it's been a full day. Um I've took most of the week off because I've been doing some some little bits at home with the family and I thought, you know what? I fancy a bit of painting, so today we've done three live broadcasts. I've got a coffee. Um so feeling a bit weary around the edges, but three live demos. And if you missed the previous two demos, um is on Facebook actually so head on over to the Facebook page which there's a link in the description for this this video it was a 30 minute Christmas card there you go and that was what we did um, today 11 a.m. UK time so that's the 20th of November 2020 so if you missed that demo head on over to uh, the Facebook page Matthew Palmer artist you can see that entire demonstration in full check it out and then literally about 40 minutes ago I finished painting this scene here this this winter landscape um, kind of night time scene it was a nice one to do I enjoyed that one um, with the beautiful of course the falling snow on that one as well so check that one out as well oh both of those are on the Facebook page uh, there should be a link in the description for the video Matthew Palmer artist okay Wonderful. Um, so here we are again on YouTube. Now I've been on YouTube for since about 2008, so that's that's quite early um, for YouTube. And um, I've been doing lots and lots on there over the years. So if you're new to my YouTube channel, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell, and that will keep you informed of up and coming events and, and, and new content and new videos. I want to mention these folks at the bottom of your screen you can see an advert for the live virtual watercolour workshop. These take place on a weekend and of course you can see here the next one is on the 22nd of November. You can see it here at the bottom of the screen. So if you've, if you've been taking part in the live workshops, um, week 35, so 35 weeks of teaching live workshops has been an extreme uh, pleasure it really has and thanks to everybody that's taken part and has had a go at these well done and it's great to see all all of the people's paintings on Facebook again Matthew Palmer artist is the Facebook page the one we did last week was this one here it was this um, stag scene it was a stag in the uh, sort of highlands of Scotland and it was all broken down it was all taught in beautiful step-by-step uh, -step detail and then of course Previously, one of the favourites was the uh, was the Northern Lights. That was a very enjoyable picture to paint with you folks, the Northern Lights in watercolour. Um, all broken down, all using three colours, so just the primary colours. One of the most popular ones that I've taught is, is, is this autumn-themed still life. You can see it there with the chestnuts, the leaf leaves and the kind of rose hip autumnal berries on the forest floor so this weekend's workshop live workshop which is at the point of filming this live at the point of this being live is you can see it at the bottom of the screen sunday the 22nd of november and it's a winter themed still life so totally different to that one we're talking nice frosty nice frosty leaves we're talking beautiful um holly and berries and some wonderful wonderful techniques so if you're new to those and you've always wanted to try painting those virtual workshops are perfect the right they're the right job literally all you need is a sheet of watercolor paper three brushes these are pretty much kind of standard brushes it's a large about a 16 or 20 um a 12 and a 10 brush those three brushes would do you proud and then three colors primary colors make perfect sense so we've got a yellow a red i'm just reaching at the back of the thing here in fact my assistant can pass them me can quite right reach there's one we've got the blue the red and the yellow so basically like crimson or rose madder or natural red try and get the focus to come on that that part of the picture sometimes easier said than done we've got a a blue so like French ultramarine natural blue and a bright yellow of some kind like cadmium yellow those three colors three brushes and you've cracked the workshop now the one that's on this weekend the 22nd and of course there's pretty much one every week so you can head on over to watercolor TV which is just down here and you can get yourself um, 
booked in if you've missed this one here you can catch up on all of them all the past ones are available as well so make sure you check them out we do have a handful of spaces left literally single figures for this one for Sunday the 22nd it's all broken down if you're new to this or you've been painting a while doesn't matter just give it a go and try it out total escapism folks get yourself booked into that you will enjoy well I have a sip of coffee and then we'll start painting So let's have a look at the palette then. The workshops are 10 pound. Um, a question has come through. The workshops are 10 pound and they start at 10 a.m. and they finish around sort of 2, 3 p.m. That's UK time. Now, people from all over the world are taking part in these. If you can't access them live, it doesn't matter because you can join in at any time it's broadcast live at 10 a.m uk but it's yours to keep so about half of the people that do sign up to these actually watch them after which is great because it's yours to keep forever think about that folks it's yours to keep forever and you can just keep enjoying and re-watching as much as you like that's a nice thing yeah cheers give it a go just need the burst of caffeine there and, and as some of you are asking in the comments on the live chat, um, if you want to catch up on any of the previous ones, here you can see all of them. That's all 34, 35 workshops are all there. So everything from a safari scene with elephants, we've got hummingbirds, we've got puffins, we've got insects like bees and butterflies, penguins, that nice looking through the window, stone engines on there. So you can actually get all of them on the previous as well. So um yeah just give it a go folks enjoy them and it's very 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 much broken down what i'm going to do today for you is a quick 30 40 minute watercolor which will be you know painting fast it's a demonstration there's a difference between a demo and of course a workshop a workshop is i'll do a bit i'll stop here right your turn you can ask live questions via email via chat you can send copies of your pictures to look at. It's a really interactive experience and it feels like one-on-one -on -one tuition. Okay, sorry, let's get back to the palette, folks. I just needed to relax a bit because it's, it's been a busy day, three three workshops. Nothing finer for relaxing than a bit of, slashing a bit of paint around, of course. Beautiful, okay, now what we have is some masking fluid which is like a liquid latex. We'll talk more about that in a second or two. We're gonna use some of that today. All the colors in the palette. Now, pretty much this picture you could do from your three colors. I'm gonna go for an alpine scene because I like that kind of atmosphere. Sticking with the winter theme. Um, it's been very much a winter themed day today, doing all the um, live stuff, which has been very nice. Um, so natural watercolors, we'll use them. We'll talk about them as we use them. Here, for example, you've got natural gray which is one of the most popular colours. You can see it says Matthew Palmer. These are basically designed by me. They've been around for about 12 years. Natural colours designed to replicate nature. This one is the official colour. See the shadow on the paper at the back? It's the colour of shadows. Natural grey is a shadow colour made from primary colours. Not Payne's grey. Payne's grey is very black. That is a little swatch I show people. That's Payne's grey. You can see that jumps off the page, whereas this soft natural grey recedes. 14 colours, all designed for replicating nature. I shan't go through them all, but you can check them all out on Watercolour TV. There's an entire section of the website dedicated to that. So you really can't go wrong, folks. You really can't fail. Got the brushes, masking fluid, liquid latex. It's the same stuff they use at Halloween for like fake skin. Um, you can sort of see if I rub it in my fingers, you can see it kind of goes a little bit like, well, like skin, but blue. This is a coloured one, which is very nice, and basically a damp brush. You can protect the brush by coating it in soap, household, kitchen, bathroom soap first. I'm not going to bother with that, I'm just going to go straight in. And basically what I want to do, that's the sketch. That's the sketch that I'm going to work on. So I've done this very basic, large mountain alpine scene, and then I've brought in a little bit of a shack in the foreground. Those tall sticks, they are basically pine trees. Pauline is saying the picture's out of focus. That's probably something that you're in, Pauline. I imagine the quality of the broadcast is not on 
its highest level. It's broadcasting from here at full, in fact it's broadcasting here at 4K, but YouTube scales it down to HD. Um, so it's probably, there's a little cog in the corner you can click on and what that will do is that'll, that'll alter the um, quality setting, but it is in focus from here. It's leaving here at its highest quality, something at your end I imagine. So yeah, there you go. I wanna zoom in close actually. Now remember this is live folks. It's a live broadcast which means that there's no editing. Some people say can't you edit the zoom where you can't do it live. It's all live. It's good fun. I like doing live stuff. So paint masking fluid on and it's going to go straight in here look and it's going to give me this nice sort of crisp edge across the top of this mountain here. Now I've painted a lot of mountains over the years. In fact I wrote a book on it, plug plug, called uh, Watercool Mountains by Matthew Palmer. Check it out on Amazon. You'll, you'll see it on there. There you go. And then we're going to bring this across here. So it disappears at the back somewhere. So that's a nice wide line of masking fluid. This blue one, it's nice because you can see it. You can simply see it, which is really good. Um, that's effective. That's effective. It's also going to go in little bits on these trees. So I'm going to put some little bits on the trees here. Not a huge amount, just little bits on the trees. Few little bits coming up to give us a snow covered effect. It'll all make sense, it'll all come out in wash, you know. And then over this side, I'll pop some on these trees as well. So I'm just kind of doing it on one side of the tree first, and then so on. It doesn't need every single little bit of the tree because obviously we're going to paint the trees in, but these are going to be sort of classic sort of alpine trees, sound of music stuff, you know what I mean. Get a bit closer in for you. It's hard to show on a camera, so if you're struggling to see it, it's it's you know, it's just how it is. So I'm just basically popping some of this on. It's just gonna give me some snow. I don't want every single little bit of it on, but uh, just a little coverage would be would be useful. After a few minutes you can wash your brushes, you can wash this stuff off um, but once it's dried on your brush it ain't coming off. Just bear that in mind, okay? So it does actually stay on your brush. You'll not see me use this much but from time to time it's nice to use it. I'm not the biggest fan of this stuff and the reason I say that is because in my opinion it can cause more damage to like brushes and things and people tend to be a little bit slap happy with it if you know what I mean by that. And they kind of put it on a bit loosely and then they think, oh, well, we should put a bit more time into that. And that's quite common, to be fair, with masking fluid. So just kind of bear that in mind. So I'm just masking off a few little bits on some of these, some of these trees. And you'll, you'll see where they've gone when we paint the thing in, you know. There's a bit of a shack here. I'll put some on the roof of the shack that'll make it look as though it's got some snow on it. Lovely jubbly, can't go wrong. You can smell the excitement, can't you? It's either that or ammonia, because that's what masking fluid smells of. Lovely. That's that's your that's your liquid latex, which sounds more kinky than it actually is. If we get close in, you can see there hopefully that it's very hard stuff to show on a camera. You can possibly see it more if I do that. Can you see where it's gone? And that's pretty much on all of the trees. That's all of the trees. Camera, apologies. I love live broadcasting. Right, let's come back out a little bit then, folks, and we'll start painting. Masking fluid can take a few minutes to uh, to dry. I'm going to do the sky first. So the sky will be the first thing that we're going to do. And I'm going to basically nip back down to the palette. These little splashes of fluid will just disappear. Once you clean your brush just pick off any little bits of fluid before they bake on and your brush will be fine. Lovely. Okay right so um, using this brush which is a blending blade most of the brushes I'll be using are my own sort of brand of brushes. Can you see that's called the blending blade large? Again everything's available online folks at uh, watercolor TV 
if you like the products. If not, just use a standard brush. It doesn't really matter to me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the water on first for the sky, that is. There are some giveaways as well, folks. So if you do book into one of these virtual workshops, any of them, I mean, if you're watching this after the 22nd of November, just head on over to the website, click on the workshop tab, you'll see that there's quite a lot of them happening. Um, the one that's happening on uh, Sunday the 22nd, there is um, some giveaways involved. Some original Matthew Palmer paintings we're gonna give away, which will be quite exciting. Now, I'm wetting this um, with this blending brush, you're bringing it right down. Um, not the entire thing because I'm doing this in the kind of a vignette style, which means I'm not going to fill the paper. I'm just going to kind of work around the centre. This paper is a not surface NOT, which means it's not rough and it's not smooth in a basic description of what, what that means. It's a medium texture, okay? Now, I want to use some crisp colours here on this one, some blues, some crisp colours because that's important so I want to take down at the palette there we go there's the palette so I've wet that top area I want to take some natural blue and that's going to go in and then I want to take some natural yellow which is like a sandstone colour okay I'll put the yellow on first that's very pale it's going to go loosely in the middle. Now, using blending blades, there's no real sort of panic if you do happen to let one colour dry because you can pretty much get it working again afterwards. Then we'll take the blue, which is a nice crisp blue, non granulation blue as well, which is rather nice. Now, because I'm doing this on a vignette style, I want to leave that edge and literally just waft it forward and back. Stroke it in. So you create that nice sky. Now in the palette briefly, if you have a quick glance here, I want to add a little touch of red to that, so like a primary colour. So it kind of goes a bit on the purple side. Now, the reason the blending blade is that shape is because it makes painting clouds nice. That kind of slightly off point. And this is going to work right down. I'm going to twist clouds. It just makes absolutely stunning clouds. The shape of the brush, it takes the fear away. I've said this before, but um, when I first designed these brushes, I designed them with clouds in mind. And then as a side effect, realize you can do a lot more with them than just paint clouds. But you often see a build up a cloud, don't you, around the, notice the little bit of water that's gathering. and I'm making sure I get right in. Look at that, stunning. So, gorgeous clouds. Again, they're the blending blades, folks. You can find everything we've used, as we've said online. Some people say that you do talk about products a lot. Well, you know something? I spent a big chunk of my week doing free demonstrations for people. I've done three today, you know, so you can forgive me. You can forgive me for mentioning products. I've got them, I wanna show you them clean the brush and they do work these things work clean the brush squeeze it through the old fingers and just lightly soften the bottom even if you find that the lines are a bit dry at this point the blending blade will reactivate the color love that sky love the purple of the blue and the yellow so that's very much a daytime sky with a bit of cloud bubbling up okay can't go wrong can't possibly go wrong and these brushes aren't expensive things I don't like UK price, they're about £13, something like that. And you get a set of two, you get a large one and a small one. Love that, really, really effective. Smashing. I want to work a little bit lower down with the same colour, the blue with a bit of red. So if you think this almost to be like a primary colour, and I want to use this along this edge here. So it's a secondary colour created from two primaries. So purples and violets are a secondary colour. Clean the brush. Oh, I've got the blending blade to use. Why did I not use that? 
Blending blade makes this easy. What we're doing here, pick up the smaller one. I said it earlier today on a live demo on Facebook, I said that um, a few weeks ago, maybe about four or five weeks ago, I did some live TV shows on a UK channel and um, there was the presenters of the TV shows were actually um, dropped in the deep end. Not really artists and they got asked if they could do some live painting and I gave them the blending blades to blend paint away like this and they all did such a wonderful job you know and that was because blending is the number one problem without question it's the big problem that people have and actually taking away the fear by giving you a tool that helps you've cracked it really have and again it's just blue with a bit of red more towards a blue um I would say for this one. Okay, now here, there's another little section like this. In fact, there's a few, but I want to work on one at a time. Down the side of this little building, this is the smaller version. It's half the size of that first one. Put a big chunk of colour down there. There's a river there. Clean the brush, a couple of wipes over the tissue. So you've just got that little bit of water. And literally, just use the side of that blade to make that paint completely fade away. We need to create recession if that's not going to happen anyway. We're just, we're just going to drag the, drag the paint away. Probably shouldn't mention recessions in the current climate. Down here in the foreground, I love that sky. We're going to do another one at the backs of these trees. Now there's some lovely masking fluid on there, which tries like a, it's like painting over the top of wax. It repels the colour and when it's dried, you just simply take it off. You simply just take it off and you, and you rub it off, I'll obviously show you that, but you rub it off with your finger or with a rubber or an eraser. Depends what part of the world you're from, I guess. Rubber has a different meaning now, don't it? Like it was in the UK anyway. Make sure that make sure that completely fades away. So it's creating levels of depth by putting shadows in. And purple. Down here. Beautiful one down here. Ooh! That's a good one. Nice broad line. Now, if you put that line on, left it a few minutes, you would have a good chance with a blending blade of going in and encouraging it to disappear because that's the nature of the bristle. And the bristle was designed by me and was manufactured to uh, relieve the pressure. And we all like a good bit of pressure relief. I'm just going to pop in a few little lines that I'm dragging out of there as well. There you go. Can't go wrong, can you? You can smell it. It's excitement, that. Beautiful. So again, we go from here to there to there. It's all doing its thing. It's doing its thing. You want to get close in, folks, and show you this little piece near the river where it banks around the corner. Because I want to pop a shadow in there as well. Use the point of the brush, otherwise there's uh, no point in doing it. Bring it across. A couple of taps and then smooth it away. As smooth as ketchup from a bottle. Bloody marvellous. And then what we'll do, folks, is we'll just pop a couple of these little little shadows, just kind of going up here. So I've been painting a lot of snow today, but you know, it's there's been a, a Christmas festival happening on this particular Facebook uh, page, and I'll link it into my face, Facebook page as well, so hopefully, uh, you saw some of the early demos, 20th of November live, it was of course. If you're watching this back at a later stage, you know, just ignore all the bits I'm talking about, things that are coming up. But see how that puts shadows and separation in? You can really mould it. It's a good way to learn shadows is a snow scene. And it it's a way that you can start to appreciate how shadows are built up and how you put in paint and how you lay colours and various things. A few more shadows to come on this one, but that's a good starting point. Yeah, but where's your light coming from? We've not decided on that yet. We'll work that bit out. Won't we? Okay, folks, that's looking good. I'm happy with that so far. I love the sky. 
uh, really happy with this guy but what I want to do is I want to give this a very quick blast with a dryer great time for you to get yourself booked into this the link is in the description uh, the Sunday the 22nd the winter still life with holly berries frosty leaves pine cones and you can enjoy some of our watercolor pictures over here we've got a bit of a collection <laughs> a collection yeah there's a post box there there you go I'll give this a quick dry folks while you do that If that's bored you down here, because it's like watching paint dry, there's a bit of a, a, a cottage, a wintry cottage. That's nice and dry folks so I can see a few people chatting about masking fluid yeah so masking fluid if if masking fluid has a problem coming off nine times out of ten it's because it's gone off okay if masking fluid starts to smell funny and has gone really quite dark it's it's simply because it's gone off all right and it does go off if you put it on too thick and you're using sort of lesser quality paper that can be an issue as well so just kind of bear that in mind i'm going to take the fluid off now actually with the masking fluid removal tool but i'm just going to take it off of these mountains for a minute so i'm rubbing it off it doesn't last forever keep it away from heat keep it in the fridge next to the maggots that works that's a fishing reference in case you didn't get that one now here we've got a bit of an issue because we've got masking fluid on the tree as well. So we'll just be a little bit cautious to sort of loosely sort of bodge that bit in a bit. There we go. So we've removed it. Now we're going to build up the uh, the mountains, put shadows in, create depth, create shape, create form. Size 10 brush. We mentioned the grey a bit earlier at the start when we were talking about colours. What's going to feature now? A natural grey is a strong old color and don't be afraid to use natural gray it's made from blue red yellow it's about 70 percent blue if you've not got natural gray you could mix it it's better to mix it than to use Payne's gray as in my opinion but that's one of those sort of personal preference things i always i'd always say with something um something like that yeah you can uh, you can decide thanks for booking on for the workshop a few of you have booked on so great nice to fill it up there's only a couple of spots left 22nd if i've not mentioned it already apologies what we're gonna do is go in here yeah but where's your light coming from i'm gonna get my light coming in this way would be nice beautiful so i'm gonna darken work darken the side of this with this grey brave soul eh got this size 10 brush I could use a blending blade actually and smell the fear clean the brush give it a couple of taps on the tissue and then go into that first one and blend it in Don't be afraid of it, be terrified of it. Just pull your paint away, let it become part of the picture. Smooth it in. It all comes out in wash. Natural grey is quite a soft colour. Now, you see how that's a bit dry underneath? So that brush won't cut it, but a 
blending blade will because it'll reactivate the paint and it'll allow the colour to nicely blend in and disappear into the picture. Thanks to Darcy by the way for keeping an eye on the chat. Although I did call her Stacy earlier by mistake. I'll blame I'll blame autocorrect for that on my phone. I've typed no end of nonsense over the years on auto on auto fixed. <laughs> like we all have. Easy done. Look how that's created depth, distance, recession, using the right colour, natural grey. If you look at the palette, you can see the blue separating from it. That proves it's mixed, you see. Blue, red, yellow. Perfect colour, really is. There's a few other places I want to bring this in, if I'm honest. I'll come back a little bit there, so you can see. I want to bring a little bit in at the side of that building again. I want that to be nice and dark just here, uh, a little bit there. So I'm just going to darken a few areas with grey. Uh, I'm also going to bring in some shadow down here as well. Just little bits of darkness here and there. Bit of water. This is the small blending blade. Like I say, if you've not got it, folks, use a size 10 brush. Just work a little bit quicker. Just work a bit quicker because what it'll do is it'll just, once it's dry, it won't blend as well. But with this brush, you can think if it dries, it's fine. Which is why I've put more than one in, really. If I'd put in more than one with a normal paintbrush. I want to say normal, like a round paintbrush. You'd find that you wouldn't be able to get the blending very successful. It's quite nice because you can look back. I'm sort of walking back a bit here and I'm sort of looking, thinking, you know, something that wants a bit of a blend there, a bit of a hard line, take it out. Even these edges, these edges I think well, that's a bit harsh. I'll just give it a give it a blend so you can soften in as much as you like. And that's what watercolour's good at. It's one of its kind of best kept secrets, I suppose you could say, because people don't realise that you can reactivate it. But watercolour, 100%, depends on what colour it is, I'll say that. But um, with the right tools, it's quite easy to actually uh, reactivate the colour, which you can't say for oils and certainly acrylics, because acrylics are pretty permanent once they dry. In fact, they're very permanent. Lovely. But that little bit of grey just adds a bit of extra darkness into some of these areas. There we go. Lovely. Now I'll come back to all that once it's dry. I'm just going to give it a few seconds to dry. I'm going to pop a shadow down there as well actually. I'm going to pop in some more shadows later on in this thing. Keep, keep the brush moving. Once one bit dries, add another, add more layers. Like for the main sort of mountain area, you could actually look at areas like this, and you could say, I want to bring in another, another shadow running parallel to that first one. So it almost creates an edge, a separation in that area. Smooth it in. Great. Keep your brush moving around, just keep it, keep sort of dancing around the paper. Not in a weird sort of ritual way, obviously. The water then, I want to paint a bit of a lake, a river, sorry not a lake. I want to start off with the grey, small blending blade again. That's my best little friend at the minute, I love that brush. I'm going to work around here, zigzagging. Round this corner, round, round this corner. That's Derbyshire fear. Round, get round this corner, love. Get your coat. And then we'll pull in some other colours. So we used that sandy colour in the sky. I'm gonna bring some of that into it. A little bit, not a huge amount. And then some violet in a minute as well. So I'm really scrubbing the grey because I want it all to melt in. Just remember I've got the tools for this. Got the violet as well, there's some violet in the sky. 
and blue. So I'll just bring in a bit of blue. Bit of blue. Can't beat a bit of blue on an evening. Bring that in. So all the colours are working in. Can you see I'm just blending it together? That's what it's all about. Like the Okie Koki, bring it in and then out. That's the starting point of the river. You can see it there, can't you? It's, it's starting to do its thing. I'm excited for you, I really am. Now what I want to do, folks, is give that a bit of a blast with a dryer. Super. And then I want to have a look at those mountains again. I'll look at the mountains again and put some more shape into them. But this time I'm just going to use a size. size. In fact I use the same brush actually, the uh, small blending blade, that'll make perfect sense. Um, give some definite shadows coming down on one side to make um, almost get ridges, like a ridge in them. So they really sort of stand out proud. Notice these are kind of sort of drooping over either side. So at the back of your mind, you've got to sort of know where you are. You can see that kind of up and down shape for these shadows, hopefully. And you can see that lovely ridge with the lights kind of catching it. Yeah, but where's your light coming from? Bring it a little bit down there as well. Is that getting old, that now? I've been saying it since March. I've been saying it for years, actually. Make that a bit darker there, actually. Just putting little bits of dark in corners, create atmosphere. a few ripples in the water. It's amazing what a difference that shadow's made to those mountains there. If you look close in the mountains you can see some socially distance skiers out on the out on the piste as it were. Just coming down after a hard session. I'm just popping in a couple of uh, couple of shadows and things. Still using blending blade down here look, just to get some shadows in from these trees. Now we know where the light is you can put that lovely cast shadow from, from that, that corner there. Obviously we're going to paint the trees in it's all part of the fun of it. Popping some shadows around here and various things. Smashing. It's all part of the fun. Beautiful, okay, happy with that. Now it's time to start to pull in some of the trees and some detail. My first job is to get myself nice and close in to that river, folks, okay? All right, and for this, I will be coming back down to the palette for a second. Sorry for kicking my camera just then. I've been on my feet all day. Poor you, must be hard painting for a living. I feel for you. <laughs> when it gets, how much power that mean? It must be lovely. Get some natural, natural brown and natural grey together, which makes a brownie grey. Believe it or not. Bit of a tap on the old tissue, number six brush. Nice, nice pointy one too, you can see that. 
got a bit of a point on it. Otherwise, there's no point using it. And we're going to go in with this colour, this dark colour, start to get some shadows and some detail rather than shadows. But these are going to make a difference, especially around the banks of that jolly old river there. So here we go. Let's pop some darkness in. I want to go up, make sure it's really crisp, work it into the snow a little bit. Look how beautiful that, that point is on that brush. Prick your finger on that. I apologise for saying prick. In context it was alright. Then I, I want to bring it across. Here. To get a bit of movement in the water. Apologies for saying movement in water as well. Turn it over, tricky bit. There it is. And then over here, I'm going to put some of those little lines in. Just helps make the water look more like it's flowing. Which I'm sure you can see. I mean, you can decide whether it's frozen or what, but look at that, that instant detail that you've captured. All right, you can see it there, can't you? Straight away. Now I can use this color to sort of dart around and put little bits on the edges. Little bits of texture on these edges. Little bits of earth, as it were. And you can do as much of this as you like. It does add to the texture and the same thing for the mountain as well. You know you get the little bits of rocks in the mountains. It's basically what we call the dry brush and it's going in following the shapes of the edges. You can put as much time as you like. I'm working pretty quickly with it being a demo. Again just to mention if you are doing a virtual workshop um, it's not this speed folks it's very steady. Everything's broken down for you. No sketching involved. It's just all nice steady work really. And it, it'll give you time to do the work. Look at what a difference that always makes when you put those rocks on. As long as you follow the contour of the rocks, you'll be fine. And the mountains even. You, you kind of see shapes within. And you sort of work to those shapes that you've, you've left behind. I mean, you've all seen the little sort of little bits of, little bits of rocks that kind of poke through on them and it makes them look very nice. I've done alpine scenes, mountain scenes for years. It's been one of the staple subjects really mountains over the years. Same as animals as well. Have a look back on the YouTube channel, loads of stuff folks. Please please hit subscribe but more importantly once you hit subscribe do me a big favour and hit the notification bell that will keep you informed of up and coming uh, new content and there's a lot happening at the minute. There has been for a long time. So it's a small thing to ask, but just pop a little subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Um, hit, hit the like button folks, give us a thumbs up and a nice comment always goes down well too. It helps me in the old YouTube, YouTube rankings and listings, it's all good. And head on over to Facebook as well, Matthew Palmer Artist, if you've not already. That's a good place to keep an eye on what's happening in my world. Painting world, that is. I love that. That, just, that starts to change it, don't it? It really does. And that river, just that, that detail that you pull in. The main focus, of course, is that central piece because I'm going for a vignette style faded edges, which I do a lot of. I'm sure you've seen me do a lot of this sort of stuff. Um, and it's one of my favorite little things to do is a, a vinaigrette, as a few people have called it over the years. Brill, okay, smashing. Back down to the palette, it's time for trees. It's tree time, everybody. Now what we're gonna do here is use another one of my brushes. Another, yes, another one. 
we've got these ones, which I know a lot of you have been buying. These have been very popular over the past few weeks. Launched about four or five weeks ago. These are the fantastic brushes, Matthew Palmer Fantastic, set of three, large, medium and small. There they are. Great for doing um, textures, natural hair brushes. The small and medium one went lovely for pine trees. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to take natural green. Now natural green is a very dark green, you can see it there. But also we'll have some grey mixed with it as well. Make it even darker. Okay. And then have some grey on its own as well. So if you're not using these uh, colours, natural green is basically yellow, loads of blue, and a little tiny bit of uh, red, a tiny bit of a red. So if you're going for primary colours, then that's how you would do that, okay? Let's put some trees in, okay? Let's get close into this thing now. So you can see all those vertical pencil lines are kind of where the trees are going to be. All right, ish, loosely, loosely. And what I want to do is have a little bit of masking tape handy as well. Uh, sorry, paper, a little bit of paper handy to keep some of the edges clean. Now, if I just pop that on there and start off by sort of tapping down the central spine, as it were, for that pine tree. That is straight on mine, it's because the board is leaning back a few degrees and honestly it's, it's vertical, no, I thought it wasn't. And then you brush out on one side. Now remember this snow on there as well, which will make it lovely when we take that off. How nice that is. Um, it goes in easy, don't it? And if you turn the brush on the side you can tap a few slightly longer ones because I know some of you like the bit more randomness to these trees so you can just sort of do the odd little bit of variation but that's a lovely quick and simple look at that stunning nice dark green very similar to the ones we did uh, on the um, Northern Lights workshop picture that we did about three four weeks back again you can pick up all the previous ones if you missed any Bottom right of that screen you can see Northern Lights. Check them all out on Watercolor TV folks, you can buy any of the previous ones if you happen to miss any. Same here as well. Pop this on and you sort of tap down that that line, beautiful, and then you flick out as opposed to flick off. Do you really see that? And bring it out. And then again you can put some little Little taps, nice. Pick your own Christmas tree. Bring it over here. Bring your own saw. How simple that is. Great, isn't it? And then, like I say, if you want to pop any any individual little bits sticking out the edges, it's up to you. You don't have to, of course. It's not a bad idea, is it? Gives it more variation. So this is, this is the small, uh, small one of the brushes. Because it's a lot easier working on a table than it is on an easel. That's no excuse. How nice they are, aren't they? Aren't they just lovely? Them. Just make sure that it's nice and crisp at its base. Brill, like that. Your little little grasses on the edges. Great for doing grasses. So, like for example, if I wanted to do some tall grasses around the picture anywhere, it really is. A doddle. Putting little bits of grasses poking out of the snow. Nice animal hair as well. And of course, you can change direction and put some. There's nice ferns as well. If anyone likes painting the sort of ferns in the pictures, just 
little bits on the edges it's quite effective and these are the bits that make the picture work in my opinion so it's little bits of texture be as precise as you want super now there's a few more trees to go in um there's one up here look now if you're doing these really tiny ones then you'd probably end up moving brushes but I'm, I'm okay with these couple here let's make sure this color is rich it's natural green and natural gray but if you've not got those colors like I say if you mix blue and yellow more blue and then add red little bits of red you'll see the color start to come out then there you go like them. Now over here in the distance, we've got some, but it's really, the detail wouldn't be there so much. Look at that, that's definitely alpine. Like a, like a picture off a chocolate bar. So in these distant ones, using the same colour, we're going to be adding a few of these around. We've got the masking fluid on, of course. That's a big tree. And even just in the background, it all helps to scale. Um, there's them two skiers, look, you see. Even in the background, you can just pop in some little little vertical blobs to represent very distant trees that kind of run down the side. It's like, this, it's like the scene off of an air freshener, Alpine Fresh. Bring it down. Pop some of these little bits. These are just little vertical spots. But in context, they look right, don't they? They look like distant trees because your mind relates them to what you've just painted detailed wise of course you can be as detailed as you want on these things but really doesn't want a huge amount of them but they are quite addictive to paint I'll be honest Very nice, okay. Brill, that's good. While I'm close into that area, I'm gonna grab a craft knife and put some light in the water. Nice sharp knife. Makes your teeth itch, that one. Reflects the snow. Puts a bit of sparkle in your life, which is a good thing. Um, looks nice, yeah? Happy? It's working well folks. Now I'm going to say that I've got a building to paint in which is going to be lovely. But let's have a look back at what we've got so far. Don't forget we've got masking fluid. How nice is that? That's making such a pretty picture. Um, you can't beat a good winter scene, in my opinion. Personal choice. Love the way this is forming. There's a building here, but we're very close to getting that masking fluid off, which means I need to give this a quick blast with a dryer again I just want to say thank you for booking the virtual workshop um we had a few people we had a couple of spots left great time to book in folks don't forget the link it's in the description it's a winter a winter still life as far as taking the fluid off you could use um an eraser but to be fair your finger does a job does the job but if you're not into that you can just use it kind of gets a bit because the rough paper some people aren't into this but there we go so if you look close now now I've removed that, you can see we've got all the white on it. Any bits that aren't coming off too easily, that's when you think about using a rubber. You can buy a special tool. Uh, called the mask away, but you know something. Just use your finger.
Now obviously when you put that on it can look a little bit, you know, sort of black and white. So if I get close into this first tree here for example, um, just to tone down things a little bit, what I suggest you do is have a look around your palette. I'm sure you've got some of that violet left that we had. Um, you can mix the violet like we did before, of course mixed it from the uh, red and the blue. But very pale. And I'm just going to pop in a little bit of this um, on some of the snow. It just helps to calm it down a bit. And it kind of softens it a little bit. It's a way of sort of easing it in a little bit and giving it a bit more realism over here as well on these trees. You can see there's a lot happening there, but if I pour some of that violet in, you can see how easy it is just to go in without taking it all away because you want some of the white. But you see watercolour is so easy to reactivate so you can just glaze over it. And it just it just calms it down. If you want any more greening, remember you've got that brush. So you think, well actually there's a little bit too much white there so I can just do some little stipples with that brush over the top and that'll just add a bit more texture. But I know something, I think I'm all right. I think I like that, that works really well. Just a very quick note um, while I'm using that, that green. I've got this branch in detail brush, which again is another one of the brushes that I've made. This one's a really fine one. And I just want to put in a few taller grasses um, because I always think it's nice to have a few individual ones just poking through the snow. just down here before I do the building. Just a few little bits on the edges. And then if I just grab some, clean that brush out, take some of that same vial that I was just using. And if I get close into that corner, to make those grasses stand up, I can pop in some shadows. Which is a nice little technique actually, it makes them jump out. Okay, just makes them pop a little bit, don't it? Do some of that at the base of those trees as well. Nice, okay, so that building, so a total contrast for the building then. It's like an old shack kind of thing. Um, what I want to do is I want to go for a bit of a terracotta roof on this. Um, so we'll have a quick glance at the palette then. This is the dark colour here that we did around the bank here with the brown and the grey, we're going to use some of that, definitely use some of that. Natural brown, natural grey. Natural orange is like a terracotta colour. Now it's a it's a striking colour to put in this picture, but I want to do it. Sod the expense. And then we'll have some brown as well to the side. So you know you can mix an orange up from obviously it's pretty straightforward in it. Orange really, you can't go wrong, can you? To be fair. I'm gonna put the roof on. Put the roof on. And I'll leave a little bit of snow. a touch of snow would be good. But I want to get some colour in here to be fair. So a really old sort of worn shack that the landowner refuses to give into. And of course I've left the snow on there. So I'll let that just disappear off. I pick up the brown as well. I'm just going to drop in a few little spots of brown on the edges. And even just a, a hint of a, a bit of dark from the corner of the palette, just underneath where the snow is, because it'll just raise it up slightly. Smashing. There's a bit of snow on the roof there. Um, I was chucking a bit of colour on the edge of that as well. Just a bit of colour on the edge, and then just use a bit of water just to soften that down. That'll just give a bit of shadow to the snow. There's a chimney there as well. And as far as the chimney is concerned, you remember the sandstone colour that we used in the um, in the sky, that natural yellow colour? It's a little bit like a raw sienna, I suppose you could say, really. I'm just going to pop it in there for the minute, and then we'll add a little bit of uh, shadow to it uh, once it's dry. The dark colour was the grey and the brown together. That'll work. And that's going to go really quite dark under here. 
and then into the brownie colour, brownie grey. I'm going to go down like a corrugated or a wooden building or something. Yeah, we'll put some building, we'll put some detail on it um, once it's had a little bit of time to to soak in there. And of course that's where it all disappears off on that side of the picture. I'm just gonna quickly grab a bit of a bit of shadow one side of the chimney. A few lines. And then even just while I've got that on my brush, I'm just gonna literally go back into that mountain. I'm just gonna add a little bit of extra shadow to a few a few areas, not much, just a little hint. Great. Now I'll just give that a second or two to soak in, um, which will not take long. And then I'm just going to add a few little bits of interest, like a little old, some little gates and things around here. Let's have a gate on one of my pictures. It's the law. Put some shadow from those. A bit of shadow on the snow as well. Great, adds a nice bit of interest, don't it? And the colour contrast that you can see. One of the great things about using kind of ready made colours is it's quite easy to get in, put some real darkness in. So if I want to add a bit of a doorway, like an old open doorway, then it's quite easy to pop that in. All gives a bit of character to it, don't it? Come back out, you can see how that's shaping up, can't you now? There's one area that I want to create a touch more depth on, and it's just here on that water's edge where those trees are. So I basically darken that area there to give it more of a drop. Looks good. Bro. And then I'm just going to use a uh, craft knife again, close into this, just to scrape off a bit of light down the side of the door and the window. You know, like the recess. Of course, I could go crazy putting all sorts of detail on there, but it doesn't need it, does it? It's not that kind of painting. If you want really detailed paintings, there's lots of that on YouTube and also, of course, on watercolour TV. If you're a member of watercolour TV, which I know a lot of you will be, then you've seen a lot of my paintings um, over the years and you've seen some of it's really detailed, um, but a lot of it, in fact, the majority is. Live demos can be nice because they're a bit more spontaneous, a bit more quick, a bit more free, and I like that. As an artist, you go through stages, and someone like me that's been painting um, from a young age, when I was about, I started teaching art when I was when I was 18. So about five years ago, I started at a really young age, actually, and uh, hopefully that comes across. Beautiful, beautiful. It just needs some uh, bearded chuffs in the sky. If you're not sure what a bearded chuff is, you're about to see. It's kind of my signature bird. Pop some of those in. Of three chuffs in the sky. And then these kind of pictures really do. I always think suit a good signature don't they? They always suit a nice moniker. I always think that. Come on, well, I'll it that. Um, probably just over here actually. 
in this corner. And uh, also, I'll pop see if this mount fits, it may do just about. It's always nice to pop a frame around the picture at the end, you know, it just kind of gives a bit of sharpness to the painting. But that's a nice alpine watercolour vignette folks. Let's have a nice let's have a nice kind of study of it. Very detailed. Of course if we start with the sky, the crisp blue in the sky, one of them gorgeous clouds. The beautiful alpine trees. That beautiful building. The river and of course down to the foreground. Now I could keep painting for another hour or so on that picture quite easily. I could have more shadow work, I could have more detail, more trees, but you know, for a quick watercolour painting that's made a beautiful scene and I'm pleased with it. Um, probably just wants a little bit of a sh an extra shadow around that building actually. This is the kind of thing that people always pick up on, so just to stop any comments. I'm going to take a little bit of violet. I'm just going to drop a very simple little shadow with a crossbar and a little extra shadow coming out from these edges and from the chimney. That should do it. Otherwise, you'd be surprised someone will send me an email about that. Um, let's just let's just come back here, folks. Take a look at the whole picture. Well done. Beautiful. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Um, don't forget folks to subscribe to the channel. This is live. So if I'm talking about dates, remember that obviously, you know, dates can be irrelevant when you're looking at something in a few years. This workshop that you can see here, 22nd of November, all the workshops happen pretty much every week through the year live from your home, just me and you. We're talking almost one-on-one -on -one tuition. Check out the workshop folks in the link in the description. If not, go to Watercolour TV, click on the workshop tab at the top and you'll see whichever one's coming up. We do have a handful of spaces left for the one on the 22nd. Well worth booking into if you're not already folks. A winter uh, still life which will be absolutely beautiful. Check it out. Don't be afraid, be terrified. Uh, and there you go, that's the uh, that's me finished. So that's three demos. If you missed any of the previous ones, check them back on the old Facebook page as well, Matthew Palmer Artist, and just enjoy painting. It's total escapism, folks, it really is. And I hope that doing these free demos and things for you guys is making you um, forget about things that are going off elsewhere in the world so I will see you very soon for more watercolour painting in fact I'll see you Sunday for the virtual workshop see you soon